everybody, and welcome to another edition of the James Perry Show here on AM790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. I'm your host, Scott Credici. Glad you could join us. The James Perry Show is brought to you each week by Bay Coast Bank, providing exceptional service and financial solutions for our community since 1851. Visit baycoast.bank. To learn more. Well, this week we are not live at Hope Street Pizza. We are recording this week's show from the Chris Berman Student Athlete Study Lounge here inside the Brown University football offices. Happy to be joined as always by my color analyst for Brown football on the radio, John Anderson. John, how are you? Good. How are you, Scott? I'm doing great, John. Thank you for being with us. And the head coach of the Bears, James Perry. James, how are you? Doing great, Scott. Thank well, you. Guys, thank you for uh, stopping by and uh, you know, first of all, James, let's talk about this. You know, the Chris Berman Student Athlete Study Lounge is part of these great new Brown football offices here. Yeah, this is a home game for me. That's you right. Know, I do, I do love Hope Street Pizza, but this is uh, a great place to work. We're very, very fortunate and uh, a great place to teach it. So this is, uh, you know, uh, this room, the, the Chris Berman room, is a great expression of that. You know, I would say to any alumni that hasn't really been here, they owe themselves to come through. I just got the tour and. What a lot of history, all the way from the teams of 1932 and 1800 on the walls to current players and people that have made the pros. It's very, very impressive. Yeah. No, no doubt. The whole complex, the whole Barrelson football complex is really uh, a great tool to teach in, uh, and it's also a great place to recruit from. You know, I think the expression that you had, John, as we walked around and saw it is the same expression that the recruits and the parents of the recruits get whenever we get a chance to walk him through. So, Coach, I promise John, uh, as he leaves on his way out, we have to take him into the locker room downstairs. He hasn't seen that yet. You'll be impressed with that, too. i got to be impressed with that, too, I bet. I remember yeah. the old locker room. <laughs> no doubt. I think, I think it was really a, a brilliant decision when, you know, the improvements, you know, which, which needed to be made were made to focus up here because as a student athlete, this is where you spend your time. This is where you develop. So for us, whether it's watching film with these guys, teaching them about various schematic and things that we need to do, whether it's how you handle the locker room and just that environment to team bond and build your team, uh, those are the critical spots. And then right across the street is the Zaccone weight room, which is you know a state-of-the-art weight room. So from a player development perspective, we have absolutely the best setup in, in FCS football, so we're very fortunate. And, and you know, before we I get into the game of last week, and you mentioned about player development, and I can man, you can tip on this. It's not just you know playing the sport; it's it's after and the life lessons that these young men learn, maybe winning or losing or competing, are life lessons that help them as they go on. And, and football does that better than any other sport, in, in my eyes. No doubt. And I think, you know, I'm really lucky because I get to coach great kids. I get to recruit great kids to a place like Brown. They're all talented through the selection process. These are talented guys. But then I get a chance to develop them and help them become, you know, young men, help them figure out what they're going to do with their lives after graduation and help bring the connections that make Brown so special together. All right, guys, let's uh, quickly go over the highlights from Saturday's game. Your team lost to the Columbia Lions on the road 23-17. Coach, uh, before we get into the highlights, to me, I would argue I thought that was maybe the defense's best performance of the year. I thought those guys really brought it on Saturday, particularly the defensive line. And, look, even like the secondary, like we got hit for some big plays, but the coverage was right there. It's just, you know, unfortunately we weren't able to make a play on the football. Yeah, I mean, when you play a, a very good Columbia team, they have the record they do because they're good, right? Coach Bagnoli's done a heck of a job. Those players, they're, you know, have an immense amount of upperclassmen, and they've done a really good job. When you carry a shutout deep into the third quarter, that's a heck of a football game. Um, you know, for us, uh, as you build a young football team, you'd love to get wins in those situations, but there's a lot to learn from. And, yeah. I mean, for me... I was just so proud because these kids, every turn, we kind of challenged them last Sunday. Coach Weaver, the staff, they challenged them, hey, we need to get better. Uh, there were moments where we played really well, whether it's Yale or, you know, Cornell or, you know, Colgate or whatever. But we, we need to get better. We need to show some progress. And to watch the kids respond like that uh, was awesome. And I think the next time we're in that situation as a team, because it, it wasn't a defensive thing where – you carry a shutout into the third quarter, and then all of a sudden it goes to heck. You know, it, unfortunately, we did not play complimentary football 
and then we put ourselves in a hole. Um, so, you know, for us, that's a learning lesson. You know, hey, we haven't won a lot right now in, in the last couple of years, and that's one of those moments where when you're up 14 nothing, how do we play complimentary football? How do we get a win? And I think the kids, you know, when we, we addressed that yesterday, the kids responded really well. And, you know, you know, Scott mentioned, it, the, you know, the defense, and especially, you know, the unsung heroes. These guys we don't talk about a lot is the defensive linemen. I mean, they only let up seven yards rushing, you know, in that uh, first quarter, 115 total in that first half. I mean, I really thought the D-line, and the whole defense, but the D-line just seemed to really win the push. I mean, just watching every play, even when you were rushing three guys, they were breaking that pocket down. Their get-off was great, too. They were getting off the ball good. You know, John and Scott, you know, there's a moment in that game where we we were defending the two-yard line. And we defended the two-yard line for three consecutive plays. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, they had a they had a decision to make whether to kick that field goal or go for it on fourth. But, you know, for us to force from the two-yard line, for, force a fourth and four speaks to your point. I mean, that is maximum effort. Week nine, uh, you know, the record is what it is. But, you know, you get those D linemen out there working as hard as they can uh, to defend that goal line first and two on the two and actually create a fourth and four from the four uh, was immense, really. So toward the end of the first quarter, the Bears would mount their first scoring drive of the game. It was a 14-play, 87-yard scoring drive, and it would finish at the start of the second quarter on this touchdown run by E.J. Perry. Now it's first, second down goal to go from the four. They're going to hand it to Allen Smith. No, E.J. keeps it, fumbles it, but recovers his fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. Wow, did the Brown Bears get lucky there on the road as D.J. Perry keeps it, trying to do a read option to Smith. The handoff gets fumbled, and E.J. is able to use his strength and athletic ability to outmuscle Columbia defensive linemen to get the football. Yeah, John, you and I were amazed that E.J. actually got that because we saw a couple of Columbia jerseys that we thought were going to get that ball, but E.J.'s like, nope, that's mine. So thankfully that resulted in a touchdown. You know, I said on the headset, that uh, we had some clean living there because, you know, uh, unfortunately we've, we've had the ball bounce against us a number of yes. times this season. So it was nice to get a bounce. Obviously, we got to do a good job protecting the football, but that was a heck of a drive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Columbia's a really good defense. That's the strength of their team. Um, it's, you know, put them in a really good position this year. And they were playing really well. And we kind of just hung in there that drive. You know, nothing – flashy nothing incredible just some some shorter throws some you know some runs that we grinded out Allen was really grinding some runs uh and then you get down you get down in the deep red zone you got to score so that was nice to see is that one of those things too too on on like the read option too where where sometimes you can keep the ball in the belly of the tailback too long or sometimes the the tailback thinks okay he's handing it to me and he starts to grab it and then the quarterback pulls it is that what happens in those situations yeah i mean i think for us we we actually even though we read the game a lot we don't run true option a lot so sometimes you get down in the goal line and you're running a true option situation it's it's a little less clean because a lot of what we do is rpo gotcha um so reading like a true option situation on the goal line we need to execute it uh better but that is what happens it is it's different than open field rpo so about four or five minutes later in the second quarter the brown defense would come up with this big play thanks to shane prevo Green takes the snap, rolls to his right in the end zone, rolling, rolling, firing. He's just going to throw it away. Could be intercepted. It is picked off by the Bears. Great job by Prevo, number 32. What a great interception there by the Brown Bears. Great pressure, great all-around defensive play. You know, it looked like, I thought Joe Green's intention was to throw it away, and maybe he just didn't get it far enough, uh, you know, outside the sideline because, uh, you know, Shane made a play on the ball and set you guys up with good field position. He got his feet down, too. Yeah. 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 Really, I mean, well, really and he's great. getting, so, so we work pressure inside out there, yep. which is great because it's a rollout. And what happens is if, if he doesn't, if you don't exert yourself, because the guy was going to throw it away, like you said, or whatever, but the way we're tracking the ball all day long was awesome. And that was one of the things, actually, that was a big point of emphasis. You know, we've played some good offenses this year, but, hey, how can we track the ball? How can we pursue? Take that extra step. And that, that's actually what I believe happened there. We're tracking the ball inside out, making 
the quarterback uncomfortable, yep. and that's why he left it inside. So, Coach, then a little bit later on in the quarter, about four and a half minutes to go, the game is halted due to a lightning and thunderstorm and lightning delay. And John and I were talking about it in all my years covering Brown football, and I started covering this team in the mid-'90s. I, I can't ever remember having a game stop for weather reasons or any other reason for that matter. In all your years of coaching, and I know you spent time at different places, Maryland, et cetera, have you ever experienced something like this? Yeah, I did. You know, we were talking about in the locker room. At Bryant, we played Duquesne and had a um, lightning delay. And uh, unfortunately, it was, it, was the exact different, it was the exact opposite scenario. We were down. We weren't playing particularly well. We came in after a lightning delay. And then when we came back out, we ended up winning um, a one-score game. Um, and actually, at Duquesne, the the situation was a longer delay. Th- this delay was long, but it wasn't. You know, that was like a three-hour delay. Uh, right, it was about an hour, right? Yep. Did you did you take that initially going in? Did they tell you this was going to be your halftime, or you didn't know that? No, they in? they. So it's our option. Yep. Al and I, you know, both agreed to do it. Um, it had the game been earlier you might consider being like eh, i still want a halftime or maybe some modified halftime but with four minutes there was no way either of us were going to want a halftime yeah so that made sense so the bears do come out the lions come out they finish the second quarter three minute intermission in between the second and third quarters and then in the third quarter the bears up their lead to 14 nothing on ej perry's second touchdown run of the game Second down goal to go, Brown at the Columbia three. Handoff, they fake it. E.J. driving to the end zone, dives, scores, touchdown, Bears. E.J. Perry does a great job faking it to Allen Smith, and then he dives for the end zone and stretches out and gets a touchdown for the Bears here. E.J. not to be denied on that one. I mean, nice stretch for the goal line and scored. Yeah, and that was that was how the play should be affected because actually the, the guy bent. The right. previous one was, was not well executed at all. That was... The, how the play should be executed. The, the defender bent. He's, you know, that's when you pull the ball. So it was 14 nothing Bears, and then the Lions would rattle off 23 straight. But then the Bears, in the fourth quarter, midway through, would bring out freshman place kicker Christopher Marin to boot this important field goal. See if Marin can make this one. Good snap, good hold. Marin's kick is up. It is on the way, and this one is good. Big kick there for the freshman Christopher Marin makes it a six-point game with 7.57 to go. That was a crucial drive and three points for the Brown Bears. Yeah, they needed it. I agree. Yeah, made it a one-score game, Coach. Put your team in a position to, to come back and win that football game down only six. Unfortunately, not able to finish it off. But, you know, Chris has been really good for you this year, hasn't he? Uh, Chris has been outstanding. You know, and he really kicks the ball well, too, on kickoff. Um, so... You know, he's a weapon. He's only going to get better. He's a true freshman who's just really, you know, had instant impact. Uh, you know, again, uh, anytime I talk about him, we've had really good kickers here at Brown. Uh, I've, you know, been on the staff and actually been a player with a couple of them. And he's as good as he gets. You know, we had we actually had a terrific one at Princeton as well. I mean, to see that happen. And he, he's hungry to get better. This is a week where he can get better. This is a week where his team, we can get better. But it's nice to see a true freshman come in and just, you know, handle the, the impact of that and the, and the pressure of that. You know, Coach, at the beginning of the of the pregame show, Scott and I, in our pregame show, as we talk about keys to the game and what's going to happen, you know, we both, you know, talked about, you know, well, this is going to be, you know, one of these shootouts maybe for Brown, you know, score 35 points or so and let Columbia chase them opposed to – Make them get, play a game they're not comfortable with, right? Right, yeah, make them a game that, that they're not comfortable with. Or is it going to be kind of that lower scoring game and the tempo of the game kind of slows down? I mean, were, were you reacting to tempo or or you just – I mean, how does the, did that the time, play go? The time where we handled tempo really well was right before half. So uh, we got the ball right before half on the three-yard line. And, you know, what you need to do there as a mature team, as a team that knows how to win, is get the ball out from being backed up. And to be honest, be mindful of the clock in the reverse. So we talk about playing fast, but when you're playing from a lead, there are some opportunities where you don't need to do too much. So that's been kind of a thing that we're trying to, you know, become better at, you know, be more more mature with. And that was an awesome drive. It resulted in a punt, but that punt occurred with 20 seconds. 
and it occurred at the 50-yard line. So that's a, that's an incredible drive, right? You right, take yep. you take three minutes off the clock, you drive the ball to the 50, you punt the ball end of half. We're up seven nothing. So that came out of the um, of the of the rain delay. Yep. So after the rain delay, right before half, that was a really good drive. So that was something to build off of. The drive where we go up 14 nothing was a hard fought drive. They're yep. a really good defense. That was a good expression of it. And then now moving forward. How can we handle on that 14-6 score? How can we handle that situation better? Uh, unfortunately, you got to get in that situation more than we've been to get good at it. But I think it was a learning lesson. We handled it poorly. But I think moving forward, you know, we'll handle it better. So how about the decision? So I I, I agreed with this decision. So uh, after you went up 14 nothing. Uh, they get called for a penalty, which is marked off on the kickoff. So you're kicking from their 45-yard line. And I said, they might squib it here and try to see if they can pin them deep, maybe around the 10-yard line, which is exactly what you guys did. Unfortunately, there was a coverage breakdown, and that gave them the momentum, right? They had to return into our territory. But tell us behind, what sure. your thought process was Yeah, there. So, so, you know, I think that, in retrospect, was a horrible decision. You know, I think I've, I put the kids in a bad position, and I'm so – is wild because you're just so desperate for a win right now because the kids work hard. I mean, they're very easy to coach. You know, we, we challenge them to respond defensively. You know, bang, they, they respond defensively. We challenge them to be mindful of the half, for example, that drive. I mean, all hands on deck, very good Columbia team. When you go up 14 nothing, sometimes you got to take – Take a good thing when you get it, right? And let, let Chris put that thing in the baseball field. So, <laughs> in retrospect, you know, you, you, you know, um, it's easy to get greedy and want better field position. Uh, obviously, that's what I did want. Um, and uh, that is not how it played out. So, I know. You know I, I really I, wish I had not made that decision. You know, when I'm sitting there Saturday night, I usually give myself 12 hours to get over a game and move on to the next. I had to give myself 13 because – that one stung. So, um, yeah, just, you know, in, in retrospect, a decision. And I told the kids, hey, we covered the ball really well. So, so for, for a different perspective, when we're kicking from the normal distance, we kept them inside the 20, both kicks. And when you do move the ball up, psychologically you'd think it's, it's far superior. But those lanes change, things change. Yep. Um, yeah. It is obviously your, to your advantage where you're kicking the ball 15 yards forward. But you're also exposing a young team to a new and different dynamic unnecessarily. Um, so as a coach, yeah, I was, I was disappointing myself. I, I think you're being hard on yourself, and that's <laughs> nice of you to take full responsibility. No, yeah, I mean that. Right. I, because, look, I, I think hindsight's the only perfect science known to mankind, right? And we yeah. can look back and say shoulda, woulda, coulda after the fact. But the fact is, in that moment, I'm going to tell you right now, Bill Belichick does the same thing. 100%. He does the same thing. And, it, look, it, I, it, it, what happened happened, and it gave Columbia a little juice, a little momentum in, in a game that you guys were otherwise controlling yep. to that point in time. But I understood why you made the move, and, and it just unfortunately what happened happened. Yep, and I think our guys, to, you know, it's wild because, like, when we're talking about that on Sunday, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, we're always looking to, to learn from things. You know, the lesson learned is whether it's me or them, we got to respond after that right and and actually the is less about that next drive it's when we're up 14-6 how do we handle that situation um and right now you know you know we're really having trouble handling that situation so we you know the kids are awesome when we get up 14-6 in the future we're going to handle that situation better uh they're hungry to handle it better as coaches we're going to you know do everything we can to put them in a good position to do that and, um, you know, I know we'll be ready to practice this week to make those changes because, heck, even, even yesterday, we, you know, we were ready to turn the page. All right, we'll take a quick time out. When we come back on the James Perry Show, we'll be joined by Bears senior quarterback E.J. Perry when we continue with more of the James Perry Show right after this. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. 
From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. Elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I'm incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our families here. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. Elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I'm incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our families here. Welcome back to the James Perry Show here on AM790 WPRV and Facebook Live. Scott Credici, John Anderson, Brown football coach James Perry. This portion of the show is brought to you by Rhode Island Medical Imaging, the official MRI provider of Brown football with 13 locations statewide. Remy, specialized radiologist and patient-focused care are in your neighborhood. And right now it gives us great pleasure to welcome to the show Bears senior quarterback. He is... He's the best player in the Ivy League, folks, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of a lot of people. E.J. Perry is with us. E.J., how you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. Well, E.J., thanks for joining us and on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, look, I, I know you, and I know how you're wired, and I know how disappointed you are that there aren't more wins right now on the record than what we have, and you'd probably trade all those personal stats uh, for victories, but just kind of kind of tell me what's been going through your mind this season. I mean, you, you put up great numbers. I mean, you've got – what, now six rushing touchdowns, you get uh, 23 passing touchdowns. Just talk to us a little bit about, you know, your season. Yeah, one of the things that I think this team and <clears throat> we've done really well uh, is we haven't quit at all uh, in in the game and uh, in practice during the season. And uh, One of the ways you see that and the ways it's paid us off is, uh, you know, when we were getting uh, beat by Harvard at the beginning of the season and we finished those last two drives out and, that came back to help us get back into the game against Brian, even though we didn't 
uh, play as well as we wanted to in the first half. And then, you know, that comes back to help us win against Cornell at the end of the game uh, where we're able to uh, have two back-to-back end-of-the-game drives. And, and that's something that, you know, put us in a position to play well against Columbia the way we practiced and, uh, you know, fought all week uh, leading up to that game. And I think it'll help us this week. You know, I, I think what people should realize is that, you know, like Scott said, we watch the games every week, and I don't see anybody, any player on the field that's any better than you on any team. I don't care if they're the Ivy League championship teams today, your speed, your accuracy. But I, I compliment you on your humbleness and your leadership out there because a guy with the type of stats that you have, and, you know, we're not putting up a lot of wins, you, you show great leadership and poise doing the things that you're doing out there. And, you know, my hat goes off, and Scott and I talk about that. I mean, here we are at Columbia. We get our first half stats. You're our leading rusher with 80 yards, and, you know, you're, you're passing the ball, and you ran for two touchdowns, follow me. And, you know, we're up, but you, you seem to handle yourself with such great poise out there. And, I, you know, I, I compliment you, you know, on that uh, and the way you do handle yourself as a player. I appreciate that, and that's that's part of the position, and and one of the things that uh, ha- has gone into is is being in a great quarterback room. Uh, you know, coming in uh, to Brown, I had the opportunity to uh, you know learn with uh, Michael McGovern, and you know previously Mitchell Jonke, and, and now it, it's it's really something that I'm trying to, and Michael's trying to, and, and to demonstrate to these guys on even in the face of this adversity guys like uh aiden and, and jake and, and Cortland and will and all these other guys in this room uh walsh that and nate lucier that are on the field right now but eventually going to be playing more and more with the ball in their hand uh that you know the winning is going to come but this is how you know it, it's a process how did it feel uh, just one question i know scott's got his questions but how did it feel a couple games ago to catch a pass and go for a touchdown? <laughs> is that the first time that, that that's happened to you in your career uh, as yeah, a receiver? He, you know, <laughs> leading up to the week, uh, we got to replay the film of, uh, you know, Jacob Prawl throwing me one against Princeton last year and uh, going off my face mask. So, so that was uh, that was fun to uh, relive that moment over and over again. Uh, so I, uh, you know, it's funny actually during the week of practice, <laughs> at the end of each uh segment we we run that uh that play uh and i dropped it twice in a row and so i went i got with mac and so like it was like this big thing he throws the perfect ball and it was right off my hands twice in a row in practice so i got with him like you have to throw this to me like 20 times let's uh, let's get this all squared away and uh you know it worked out and he threw a great ball uh and uh got us in the end zone. On the question one. is, could could your uncle get that type of separation if that play were called for him back in his heyday? You yeah, know, I mean, yeah. you had tremendous separation on the DB on that play. It would have been very tightly covered. <laughs> I might have muscled the catch. I was going to say, he'd do it a little different. He uh, might throw an elbow or something. Uh, James, Coach Archer at Cornell uh, said something the week of our game. He said, uh, in my opinion, EJ is the best quarterback this league has seen probably since Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'm obviously high praise, and I agree with him. And I know if had some good ones. Look, you had some good ones at Princeton. I love it. Certainly stands out. But um, I mean, you guys, you have NFL scouts at practice every day taking a look at this yeah. young man. You know, you know what I think is is fun for me is I've always been a process guy. I've always been work ethic guy. I've never been results driven. And I think sometimes people want to label that as oh, you're not a winner. You know, but when you know when we're winning on those championships here with Doherty. Uh, that's how I talked. And when we did it at Princeton with Epperly or Lovett or Kanoff, that's how I talked, the exact same way. And certain guys respond to it. So Johnny's one of them. And one of the things that I did this summer was I got Johnny together with EJ because they have a shared ethic. They have kind of a shared way of viewing the football game and attacking the football game. And I think EJ does it absolutely uh, at the highest level. Uh, it's been super fun for me to coach him. And because of the process and because I see how much better we're getting and so much of it is because of his work ethic. And it's been, for me, uh, as enjoyable as any guy I've coached and absolutely it's a credit to him. It's a work ethic and uh, it's particularly fun that he's my nephew and all that. But to me, you go out, you work, you play the game hard. You're, you know, even though you play quarterback, you're a physical guy. Uh, and you can peach your ass off, and, and that's what he does. So um, 
I've never seen anything like it, and I know we all want to get more wins, but I can tell you this. I'm, every single game that we go out and play, I know he's going to be prepared to play, and I know we're going to have the best guy on the field, and um, we'll do that again this weekend against Dartmouth. And which, uh, you know, if we go back two years ago, uh, you know, we, as Scott and I have talked, um, we almost knocked Dartmouth off. If you remember, yeah, we, DJ threw a perfect <laughs> pass to Scotty Boylan in the end zone. Yeah, and we almost knocked them off. So I mean, you well, know, I think you know, I think some of that does. So if you know, I hope EJ takes a lot of pride in this, and I know um, sometimes when when I see him, he's got steam coming out of his ears because he wants to win so bad. But you know, we absolutely right now have a tremendous culture on this team. Uh, we have what is called dispersed leadership. Some of it originates with Allen and EJ, but it really does permeate the locker room. And I, I have no doubt, as tough a loss as that was, and that, you know, against Columbia, that was one of the toughest I've been a part of. I have no doubt we're going to have an awesome practice tomorrow. And it's a credit to EJ and the other leaders that are in that locker room. So it's interesting. I, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, you know, I, we, John and I talked about this earlier. Columbia is a type of game that probably doesn't prefer to get into a shootout. That's just not their style of play. I feel the same way about Dartmouth. So I feel like if our offense can really get cranked up and, and make this a, a, a fast-tempo game, a game that's going to be played in the 30s, then I think that's a game that, you know, it, it might play to our advantage a little bit, let's put it that way, because it's not necessarily the type of game that Dartmouth wants to play. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think for us, we always look for ways to play faster. And there, there are times where, the, you know, the pace of play of a game changes towards the end of the game. But absolutely, when you're talking about how we want to come out and play, each and every week we want to get a little faster. We want to be a little faster this week, next year. We want to be supercharged, right? We want to be even faster there. Yeah. So we'll be practicing to do that this week. Um, you know, like I said, it's it's a really, really good group of, of upperclassmen who helped me get that done. And I know EJ will take it seriously to put his best forward. You know, EJ, you know, as one of the team captains, uh, you and Alan, uh, what is the, the the mindset, you know, as a team, as you're com- coming into Dartmouth uh, right now? What's the flavor around the, the locker room? Yeah, you know, you know, for me especially, I know Alan and some of these other guys have the uh, potential for another year, but, y- you know, it, it's your last game. So yep. y- y- you have whatever you have left, you're going to give. Uh, you know, there's uh, – coach talks about – the season being a marathon in, in, in the uh, a sprint, not a marathon in the Ivy League, because we play with no buys and it's a shorter season, and uh, you know you're you're saving yourself for something that's never going to come. Well, that, that's certainly true in the last game of the year, so you you better let it all go. And I know uh, there's a lot of guys in there that love this game, that love this program, uh, that that are going to do that. And uh, it starts like Coach said tomorrow, and and I know that's going to be fun to go out and have your last Tuesday. And, last Wednesday and et cetera, and it's going to be, you know, we want to celebrate with a very well-executed game and, and one where, like last week, those guys hit and play hard and, 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 and compete. EJ, you know, we just call the game, so we call what we see down on the field, but there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know, right? The, yeah. guy that's, the guys that know are the guys that have the helmets on and are out there on the field. So I'm going to ask you this question. We started the first segment by playing highlights in the game. I want to ask you what happened on this play because nobody knows better than you. This is the first touchdown of the game. Now it's first, second down goal to go from the four. They're going to hand it to Allen Smith. No, EJ keeps it, fumbles it, but recovers his fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. Wow, did the Brown Bears get lucky there on the road as DJ Perry keeps it, trying to do a read option to Smith. The handoff gets fumbled, and EJ is able to use his strength and athletic ability to outmuscle Columbia defensive linemen to get the football. All right, so tell us what happened from your perspective. Yeah, so that's one that uh, you know you have to hear about in, in film afterwards. <laughs> uh, you know the 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 play is is a uh, you know run in, up the middle, and uh, you know I I got uh, uh, giddy seeing a lane and, and tried to pull it from Allen, who wasn't expecting it. And it was a muffled, uh, you know, mesh, and uh, the ball ends up on the ground. And at that point, uh, you know, you, you know, you're gonna hear about it worse if if you don't recover yeah. it. So uh, <laughs> you, you do everything you can to get on it. So, uh, you know, luckily, uh, you know, we were able to recover that and, and, and put the ball in the end zone. 
I saw that energy in him when he pulled that ball yeah. away. You could tell, I don't want to listen to coach after that. Yeah, there were two blue jerseys like on that, and it was like, no, no, this is coming back to me. <laughs> so last year, or two years ago, I should say, you play basketball. As soon as that Dartmouth game was over, you're in the gym taking, you know, hundreds of jump shots. Um, this year, I would imagine, not the case, right? I, it, now all your focus has to be in trying to prepare yourself for the NFL draft, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, Co- Coach Martin was, uh, you know, unbelievable in giving me an opportunity to be a part of the team. And, uh, you know, I, I still want to uh, do what I can and, and go to the games and especially get all these kids out to these games because they're, they're fun to watch. And that team, I don't know if you saw that game against oh, yeah. UNC. They, I was down there. We were watching. Everyone was watching in the hotel. Uh, I think we stayed up five minutes past curfew. We got we got okay. to bed right after that. But uh, the uh, – they're a really good team, and, and we'll, we'll be getting out there. But, yeah, I graduate in December, uh, so even if I wanted to, it would be like That's three right. games uh, that I, I would be able to participate in. So, you know, I, I've spoken with Coach Martin, and, and I'm going to hopefully be able to, uh, you know, rally the troops and we'll, we'll get some fan support for these games because they're going to be a heck of a team this year. And then, uh, yeah, start training and everything. So. How does that training work now? Do you go into a camp, or how, how do you train here, or do you go into – because you're out of the school, so you yep, have to go yep. someplace, correct? So so I'll figure all that out, uh, you know, right after this season ends, uh, you know, with my, my dad, and, and uh, I'll be, you know, getting advice from Coach Perry and, you know, some of my other uncles and, and whatnot on how to navigate that situation because uh, they've obviously been through yeah. it with their former players and uh, – themselves uh trying to do it as well so you know hopefully uh you know that will all take care of itself after the season right now the only thing that we're thinking about is uh playing this game saturday coach what are the nfl scouts saying to you when they come to practice and they watch ej or what questions are they asking you about him yeah i think well i think what's kind of fun is ej's progression has married with the program's progression and some of it to other observers is below the surface you know what i mean like we're building a foundation and when it comes up through the surface then it'll be visible uh but in the meantime i'm really proud of the way that he's improved uh and a great expression of that is his completion percentage right he uh just throws the ball really well so i think it's i think it's really well established he's an elite athlete uh what he did two years ago kind of exhibited 900 something yards rushing and Here's his kid. He's so fast. He's such a playmaker and all that. Uh, his, you know, his ability to throw the football now, I think, is is very visible. You know, just how accurate it is, just the type of ball that he throws, and it's a lot of hard work went into that. You know, he's he's cultivated uh, the ability to throw a nice, accurate football with good velocity. So, um, you know, it's something that not a ton of Ivy League guys do, but having some experience and got, having guys. You know, going to the NFL, we have a, a, a good resource for him at Michael Hoyt right now. So we'll be able to connect with him the things that he needs to be successful at the next level. And moving forward, really, in this league, you've got to be producing NFL players. So, you you know, it's not like a, 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 where the NFL pipeline, but in order to compete for a championship, you've got to recruit and develop a certain amount of guys who are, are that caliber player. That's just the, that's the landscape right, right. now. So... Um, you know, we'll, we'll be there for EJ and, and give him the things that he needs after the season to, to be successful in uh, whatever he needs. And I'm proud of him just getting better. He, it's just another example of a guy getting better, working hard, and it, and it shows. You know, to underscore Coach's point about your ability to throw the football so well, we talked about this multiple times during the broadcast oh. Saturday. Those weather conditions, that wind when that storm rolled in, and even at, in the aftermath of the storm, I thought teams might have to take advantage – uh, when they had the ball going with the wind as opposed to against it, you had no problem throwing into that wind. T- talk to us about that. I thought that would be an issue because wind affects the passing game. It didn't seem to affect you. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when I was watching the film, it was like, well, it makes it a lot easier when, you know, you throw a ball that's like six feet over the head of anyone else and Graham Walker goes up and, and snatches it out of the air. On, that was, that was on a great a, catch. Uh, <laughs> on yeah. that and then I mean I think he had like three in a row catches on that drive so you know all season we've had these guys uh, who have run really good routes who have run them consistently and who have caught the ball really well 
and that makes you all the more confident. You know, I think one of the things that playing in weather conditions is you don't feel confident releasing the ball, whether it's, oh, it's going to move it off or it's going to die in the wind or whatever. Like, I've had the confidence to be able to throw those balls to these guys because they've made plays all year. And, uh, you know, I think that definitely helped uh, uh, Saturday against Columbia, you know, with those conditions uh, at times. And, you know, those guys, the wide receivers, as Scott and I can say, when we started off the first game and we've watched them progress, I mean, they really have won the battle there. There's good coverages, like you said. They pull balls down low, high, in coverage. Contested balls, they win the battles. Absolutely. They've – it's been – really something to watch i mean if you remember from from last year uh you know wes and hayes and and uh we're we're making plays but you know this year is is off the charts and and that's been a credit and and graham and mark and alan and chris boyle and even these backs who are in the passing game so phenomenally and and targoff uh zach who who's been an unbelievable player for us all year and and I know there's there's guys who I'm missing, but this these guys who have been catching the ball have have it's been a credit to what they did all off season. Uh, you know, dealing with Coach Perry, who uh, you know w- was very very coaching them very hard uh, throughout that time, and then their their work on their own, uh, working with me and and uh, Jake and Mac and all these other guys uh, in the QB room. So, how does it as a QB? You know, one of the stats going into uh, last week's game is that with at least one reception had gone to 17, you know, different receivers. And, you know, we watched the receivers come in and out in droves. I mean, there could be four guys coming in, could be five, yep. four. I mean, it, it, it's like we're changing of the guards constantly. How is it as a quarterback to be able to get that routine because it's not the same guys you're throwing to all the time? You know what I mean? You get used to a guy and you know where he's going to cut or how he's going to play it. And now you've got a whole new wholesale coming in next play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a credit to Coach Bunker, and it's a credit to these uh, these receivers. You know, they all run their routes very, very uh, similarly. And that's that's the key to a, a great passing game is, is when you say, oh, this is our play and we want to be in these spots, is that they're going to be there. And, and when I turn and, and look, they're there. And, uh, you know, that's a credit to Coach Bunker and, and all these receivers who have, you know, uh, done that so well all year and 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 like coach perry mentioned the completion percentage that's a big part of it and uh being you know this second and and really third year learning the system because we got that uh you know covid year where we got an extra spring or whatever uh and and time to learn the offense it's really taken a jump in in that aspect of the game from your perspective what's the most difficult ball to throw i i ask that question because i think you are phenomenal on the back shoulder fade passes and you've had some touchdowns this year like in the corners of end zones whether it's to you know to rocket to sutton to walker uh that you know the defender's right there and there's only one spot you can put it to make the play and you put it there but what's the most difficult ball to throw from your eyes yeah, from from historically speaking, I always uh, struggled with with like these in cuts, and uh, even last year or two years ago in 2019, like that was something. These uh, you like know, the dig routes, yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. or yeah. even shorter ones yeah. because you know the lack of surface area, or whatever. But this year, uh, you know, that was something that we looked at in in self scout last year in 2019, and it was you know something that we do at at Brown that I hadn't done previously in high school or or had the data to do uh and that's where it like became apparent and uh it was something we really drilled and I think uh you know it, it's gotten a lot of improvement on that area and also you know these guys have run these routes really well and and, and you know like like I said it's really easy to throw to to big body guys like Mark and Graham and and even guys like Wes and Hayes who are getting these, the separation and Allen. Uh, so it's it's been, you know, two-part, uh, a lot of work in the offseason to bring those things up. And, uh, so, so Scott, you know, what EJ's referencing is, so so what Coach Marini does, uh, it's really cool. So, so Heather will put together a chart. You know, it takes a lot of work and, and there's a lot of data of where these balls are being thrown. Yep. So then EJ can go back watch it with her and say, okay, now this is this in-cut area where our completion percentage in this area of the field might be lower 
than another area of the field where the completion percentage would be higher. Yep. So that's he's referencing yeah. those things. And I think, yep. you know, the two of them actually have worked really well together just from the perspective of how do we identify these things and then how to adjust. And, and, and it's, you know, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, Coach Smith uh, from 2019 did it, did similar things, but Coach Marini's really taken the uh, aspect of tracking every single throw that we make during practice, and it's up on the board for us and our completion percentage through practices through the week and, and where it comes from. And, and that's been a huge part because we looked at it last year in 2019, or tw- I keep saying last year, but two years ago in 2019, yep. and <clears throat> 59.7, we all said that's not where we want to be. And one of the things when we dug into that, uh, me and Coach Marini, was certain areas and certain routes that we needed to improve on. And then we tracked that all along through camp, through the season, and and with all of the room. And one of the things we saw is that, like, our completion percentage in practice jumped unbelievably. And like this whole program is driven by, you know, that that turns into uh, what happens in the game. Must be a special game coming for you, you know, senior day. You know, it's the last time, as you had mentioned, and I'm sure you're going to have a whole bunch of family that uh, that's coming down here. I mean, your uncle's the coach on the side, your father's football, your whole your whole family coming down here to see this. You know, like you said, it's it's over from here. You know, yep. it ends. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be uh, fun. You know, my parents have uh, done an unbelievable job of supporting me my entire career. Uh, they've you know driven me uh, at a very early age to. Uh, you know, to where I am, my dad especially, but my mom as well. I mean, you don't get anywhere without your mom in life. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, whether it's car rides or, yeah. or meals or planning or whatever the case is, um, and every athlete in that in that building knows that that's the case. Uh, but um, you know, it's it's going to be very very special. They've gotten to a lot of games this year, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we can put our best foot forward, and uh, you know, I'll be able to. Uh, see them after the game and, and the rest of my family as well. My grandmother and Aunt Louise and a bunch of other of my uh, family members have been to, uh, both of my grandmothers, uh, have been to almost, I think, every home game and all, uh, a few of these away games as well. So it's been it's been really special. A couple of years ago, I didn't this year, but a couple of years ago, I, I did, I ran into your grandmother at yep. the Cornell game and I was impressed. I was like, you've come all the way up here to see your grandson. That's very, very in, in, impressive. Yes. Very impressive. Yep. Well, EJ, good luck against Dartmouth on Saturday, and, and also good luck in, with your future. I yeah. mean, you've got a bunch of people here that are rooting hard for you and, and uh, really do believe that you will be playing in the NFL at the next level. Uh, thank you for all the great moments you've provided us because I can't tell you how fun you've made our job. I mean, to, to be able to call your yeah. games, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, best of luck to you. Thank best you. of luck, EJ, and thank you. Thank you. All right, EJ Perry, our guest. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll preview the Dartmouth game with the head coach of the Bears, James Perry, when we continue right after this. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. 
The Elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I am incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our families here. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. The Elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I am incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our families here. Welcome back to the James Perry Show on AM790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. Our final segment of the show brought to you by Ticket Smarter. Nothing beats the excitement and the power of live events like Ticket Smarter for all the best sports, concerts, and theater events. Visit TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Ticket Smarter, proud to be the official ticket resale marketplace of Brown Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. All right, Coach, we're literally up against the clock. Yeah. we got about a minute or two. Your thoughts on Saturday's matchup with Dartmouth. George, you know, first of all, it'd be great to be at uh, Richard Gales Field at Brown Stadium uh, this time of year, especially. We're talking November, beautiful service. G give us a chance to play fast, and uh, we'll need to. You know, they're a very physical group. Uh, they are just extremely disciplined, you know, so on both sides of the ball. They do not get exotic, almost uh, at a rate that I've never seen before, you know, they, you know as far as you know, defensively not pressuring a lot, just being extraordinarily sound and disciplined and offensively doing the same. So uh, we'll be looking to play our fastest and best game, and, and uh, we'll need to. They're a heck of a team. And coach, on to the seniors, yep, too. I was going to yep. say, Coach, uh, what do you, as we wrap up here, what do you have to say to your seniors as their you, final day? You know, I am so thankful for their efforts. And, you know, for us as a program, we're very appreciative of all the support that we get. You know, I know, you know, how many people are behind us and behind these kids. It's an opportunity to go out there and improve a lot of people right, prove that we, we're a program that keeps getting better. It's because of their efforts, and, you know, and, and put our best foot forward. So uh, I have totally enjoyed coaching these guys, you know, both seasons, and I look forward to seeing the 12 fifth years and the 12 seniors uh, have their last chance to take Brown Stadium. And having done it myself, I know it'll be a special moment. And, Coach, lastly, I know I speak on behalf of John when I say this. This is our last show, and thank you and your entire staff, your student-athletes, for making us feel like a part of the Brown football family. We, yeah, we love what we do, covering you on a weekly basis, doing this show, more importantly, doing the games on Saturdays. And I love what you said earlier, how, you know, that foundation's being built. Fans might not be able to see it, but pretty soon they're going to see that house start yeah, to no, rise. And, yes. and you know what? The kids do. You know, the kids see it. I appreciate you guys' support. and. That, you know, I know everybody who loves Brown football, this is a very easy group to root for. So 
uh, get behind us on Saturday. We'll, we're going to work hard getting ready for it, and uh, we'll have fun competing. All right, Saturday Thanks, kickoff, Thanks. noontime against Dartmouth College. That means John and John will be on the air at 11.30 a.m. right here on AM790 WPRB. And that'll do it for our broadcast of the James Perry Show. For John Anderson and the head coach of the Bears, James Perry, my name is Scott Cordishi saying good night, everybody.